sermon that uh, we have been uh, talking about uh, what is the Christian worship. We, we could see many things about that and we learned about how the act of worship had been uh, progressing time to time in Bible in different times and uh, we learned that how it was progressing the worship the act of worship or concept of worship was progressing in the time of Adam and Eve and also Cain and Abel and Abraham and Isaac. Amen? You remember that? You remember that? Hello? You remember that? Okay. So, we have been talking about all those things and today, uh, let us turn our attention uh, to a book of Exodus and this will be the last session of this theme. Okay, the main theme was the Christian worship and today is the last session of that theme as we are learning and as we are thinking about this particular uh, I mean, topic, let us pray that Man, oh Lord, help me, help me to, to understand what is the Christian worship and help me to worship the Lord in truth and spirit and also according to the word of God. Amen. So let us pray for that and uh, we are turning our attention uh, to the book of Exodus chapter 15 and uh, uh, they, uh, there we are reading about the next level of the worship of the people of Israel. The next level of the worship of the people of Israel. That means the worship with song, musical instruments and dancing. The worship through singing songs and musical instruments and dancing. Okay, let us read Exodus chapter 15 verses 1 and 20. Exodus chapter 15 verses 1 and 20. Yes, now, now we can uh, read uh, verse 20 also, 20. Same chapter, 20 verse. Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her, music and dancing. Yes, okay. So listen, you know, uh, we know that in, in Bible, there are many people um, who was, uh, I mean, uh, 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 worshipping God in this particular way. That means singing songs and using musical instruments and also uh, worshipping God and dancing and all. Okay. So we know that David in, in Psalms always mentioned about the importance of songs in worship and praising God. And in uh, uh, Second Samuel chapter 6, we read that, I mean, uh, David was shouting and dancing before the ark of God before the ark of God when they were bringing uh, that from the house of Obed Odom, Edom okay then and and we have to understand you know the this pattern of worship singing songs and worshiping God and dancing or using uh, musical instruments you know it is written in Bible and there is nothing wrong in worshiping God shouting praising worshiping God there is nothing wrong in that right you know, when we come to the presence of God to worship the Lord, you know, if you're if you're shouting and if you are shouting hallelujah, praise the Lord, you know, when we are singing songs, there is nothing wrong in shouting to the Lord because that's the reason that we are here. We have many reasons to say that when the Lord has been good to me and the Lord delivered me and God is the redeemer and all those things that when we remember, we will worship the Lord with shouting and praising God's name. That's what we read uh, about Second Samuel chapter 6. And also in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 and 20 we read, Glorify God with your body, serve the Lord with your strength and your power. So glorify God with your your body. That means, you are going to be able to do that. You are going to be able to do that. You are going to be able to do that. You are Alla, amen. Praising God, Kartavan Nandi Paria, Hallelia Paria, thanking God, I mean, with our strength and with our power and with our body, I'm number Sadiram going to Kartavan and Dianam, number Devata Mahatta Pertanam, amen. That may be lifting your hands or, I mean, waving your hands or something or jumping or dancing and praising God and shouting. 
you know that is known as i mean you can glorify the name of the lord through your worship i mean with your body then and even in exodus chapter 15 we can see that moses and miriam they were leading the israelites into worship and they all together singing and dancing and worshiping god with gladness after crossing the red sea then after crossing the red sea these people i mean moses and miriam they were leading the people of israel and saying them you shout uh, shout with joy to the lord i mean worship god because god has done many other i mean miracles in our life so that's the reason we are going to worship god and they were leading those people and we know that what are the reasons of these kinds of worship i mean is very clearly that is which is written in in chapter 15 you know while they were worshiping god with songs and singing and instruments and dancing there are many reasons it is also written in chapter 15 you know it was not simply that they were worshiping god it was not simply they were uh, singing songs but it was with a reason that they were worshiping god the first thing which is written there is the song of redemption let us see chapter 15 verse 13 You know it was a song of redemption chapter 15 verse 13 in your loving kindness you have led the people whom you have redeemed in your strength you have guided them to your holy habitation that is these people we know that you know Moses and Miriam when they were leading the people of Israel into worship they have to remember something that is the redemption you know the redemption that they have experienced in their lives and we know that the people of israel they were under under pharaoh in egypt i mean for 400 years and we know that god has been sending 10 plagues among the among the egyptians to deliver the israel people you know that the 10th the one was the death of the firstborn of egyptians you know same time what is happening when this is happening when the firstborn of the of the families of is of misray or families of philistines or uh, uh, what is that uh, egyptians okay in the same time the people of god the people of israel they are celebrating the passover they are celebrating or observing the passover that they were doing something that you know they were killing the lamb and they were applying the blood on the door post I mean so while they were doing that it indicates that there is a redeemer coming up in the new testament we have to think about that and that is the redeemed by the blood of the lamb and you have to know that when the people of israel they were observing the passover and when they were slaughtering the lamb you know a kunyadine avaru arthu i mean avada passover avaru aajirikkumbol i mean namakku manasilagana kaari endha nu ariyamo nammada karthavama yesu christu vaagana kunyada kaliver crucial namakku vendi യാഗമാക്കപ്പെട്ടു എന്നുള്ളതായിരിക്കുന്ന ബോധ്യമാണ് നമുക്കുണ്ടാകുന്നത് ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ റീസൺ ദാറ്റ് വി ആർ വർഷിപ്പിംഗ് ഗോഡ് ബിക്കോസ് വി ആർ ദ റെഡീംഡ് പീപ്പിൾ hallelujah and we have a redeemer and we are the redeemed people by the blood of Jesus Christ who was the lamb of God hallelujah and that's the reason even in revelation chapter 5 verses 9 and 10 you can read there the song of redeemed people in heaven they are singing about the redeemer men so you know it is particularly written in heaven the people are singing and saying that i mean our god is the redeemer can you read that verse maybe revelation chapter 5 uh, verses 9 and 10 and they sang a new song saying worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals hmm. okay this is a song of the redeemed people amen veendedukkappettadai janathinte aaradhanai paattumana namukku velippadu sudhir kaana sadikkana avare evade irikkunu swargathil irikkiyana and they are worshiping god and they are worshiping jesus because they know that they are redeemed with the blood of i mean jesus christ amen so we know that once we were under the darkness and under the bondage of sin and satan but in first peter chapter 1 verses 18 and 19 we are reading that we are redeemed not with the perishable things like silver or gold but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ the lamb without blemish and defect 
Then, so we know something that we are redeemed people and we are redeemed from all the darkness and the influence of sin and all the I mean, satanic attack and everything and we were under the bondage of sin and Satan. But now we are the redeemed people and that also possible through the, the, through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And this morning we are worshipping God. First of all, the reason is we are the redeemed people. When, and we are thinking about, we are redeemed not with anything of this world or perishable things like silver or gold, but we have the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb. When through that, we are redeemed and that and the, the, the blood of Jesus Christ is without blemish and defect. Okay, so we are worshipping God because of that. I mean, so secondly, you know, think about I mean, why those people, uh, those people were worshipping God. Second point, okay? Why those people were worshipping God? In Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 to 5, you will see that it was a song of victory and freedom. Man, it was a song of victory and freedom. You know, the people of God today, we are worshipping God. We are singing songs. We are playing the instruments. And we are dancing or jumping. And we are saying hallelujah, shouting glory to God. There is a reason. There is a reason because we are the people, I mean, those who are, I mean, victorious and we have the freedom today in Jesus Christ. You know, why those people were, I mean, uh, were, I mean, uh, 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 shouting and uh, uh, dancing and praising God and singing songs. Man? Because it says that he defeated the enemy and he conquered and deli I mean, declared victory over them. Man? When you read uh, maybe uh, verses uh, 1 to 5, you will understand what the Lord has done for them. Man? How they became the victorious people. Man? How God has given them the victory and the freedom. It is very clearly written that what the Lord has done for them. And it is written, He is highly exalted. The horse and its rider He has I mean, hurled into the sea. And also, the Lord is my strength strength and song and he has become my salvation and again in verse 3 the Lord is a warrior the Lord is a warrior look into your Bible when open your Bible and look into the Bible I mean, don't sit simply you know uh, and you're just listening like uh, you know something is happening there no look into Bible open your Bible and see that Bible is it written in there okay now many things are written in the Bible that we have to take that and it says that the Lord is a warrior no, for the people of Israel, God was a warrior. Men, I mean, I don't know the youth of I don't and the Makal Kuvendi and I don't know. Youth the Veer and I don't know. Every week I'm Wendy, Youth the Veer and I don't know. And in verse 4, it says that Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has cast into the sea. And the, and the choicest of his officers are, I mean, drowned into the Red Sea. When, when you remember all these things that God has done for the people of Israel, they are not silently sitting there. They were just jumping and they were dancing and they were worshipping God with shout and glory. Hallelujah. And this is what we understand from, the, from that uh, I mean, five verses. And fifth verse is that the deeps covered them. They went down into the depths like a, like a stone. Amen. Enemies. Amen. So that is the reason here the people of God, they are worshipping I mean, and saying that oh, we are singing unto the, uh, unto the Lord. I mean, and also same time, sometimes, you know, we feel like, uh, I mean, I'm not singing a song or I don't, or I don't want to sing a song. You know, some of the situation that we are going through, sometimes we, we think that, okay, I cannot sing now because I mean, my situation is very bad and I cannot sing now. I cannot dance now. I cannot uh, I mean, play the guitar or organ or I cannot, uh, I, mean, I mean, shout to, uh, with, a, with a joy because uh, my, 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 my situation is very bad. You know, the same thing is written there in Psalm number 137, 137, we read that, you know, the people of Israel, when they were under the captivity of Babylon, they were not able to sing unto the Lord, because they were under the bondage. Hallelujah. They were under the bondage and they were saying, you know, we can't sing a song of Zion here in Babylon because we are the slaves and we are under the bondage. It says that by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and wept when we redeemed, when we remembered Zion. You know, they are remembering about Zion, they are remembering about Jerusalem, but they are not able to sing the songs there in Babylon. 
The reason is, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, and they requested us to sing one of the songs of Zion, but how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You know, the people of Israel, they are sharing their testimony and saying that we can say we can sing a song in Babylon because we are in we are under bondage. You know, in Malayalam it is written, I mean, I mean Babel Nadigata Tira Tinyangal Irinu, Sione or the Pol Yangal Karinu, I mean Nadavale Ali River Chagal in Men Yangal Yangala Kinderangala Tokito, Yangal Bedaraki Kondo Boy were Sion Gidangal and the Choli and the Paranu, Gidangalayim Yangala Pedi Pitchavar Sandor Shutanyang or the Chodicho, Yangal Yahovida Gidam, Anni De Shata, pardon the Hallelujah. But we have to know that when we remember God's work and we, when we remember when what the Lord has done for every one of us, when we cannot keep silent. Right? We cannot keep silent and we will shout with joy to the Lord because when the Lord has redeemed us. Amen? This is the song of victory and freedom. Do you believe that you and me are the freedom people. That means we got freedom in Jesus Christ. We got freedom in Jesus Christ. And that's the reason that we are singing unto the Lord. Because God has defeated the enemies. God has defeated the enemies. And we got victory. I mean, through the death of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So let us remember I mean, how the Lord has been delivering us. And let's remember how the Lord has been providing for the people of God. And protecting the people of God. And defeating the enemies. And delivering the people of God. And praising the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And this morning also, let us pray that. I mean, let every family, let every family, let every individual, let every believer experience the power and the presence of God I mean in our personal life and that God is able to deliver you and me from all kinds of the snares of the devil hallelujah thank you master hallelujah and that is the reason that we can say that this was the song of victory and freedom I mean, first of all that was the song of redemption we are the people of redemption. Hallelujah. We got the redemption. Why? Blood, uh, by, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And again, we see that third point. The third point. This is a song of describing the weapons of God. Man, those people, the people of Israel after crossing the Red Sea. They were singing the song. That song was describing about the weapons of God. In Exodus chapter 15 verses 6, 6 to 10. Yeah. In 6 to 10. And there are many things. We have no time to elaborately say about those things. But let me tell you one more thing. That it says that your right hand. Hmm, and majestic in, you are majestic in power. Man, and the Lord shatters the enemy. Your boring anger. And you consume them as a chaff. And verse 8 says that your nostrils, the waters were piled up. And verse, verse, verse 10, your wind, the sea covered them. Man, and all those portions when you read, you know, God is doing something for the people of God with his weapons. With his weapons. Okay. Namakka vendi, deivam, deivatthinda chila, amen, endana, aithangale karthava, God can use anything as a weapon. Okay? And God has given for the New Testament people, the weapons are there, the, the full armor of God is there. In Ephesians chapter 6 verses 13 to 18, you will understand, God has given the full armor of God. Hallelujah. Why God has given this full armor of God? Because we are still in the battlefield. We are still in the battlefield. So again and again, let me tell you one thing. We are in the battlefield and always we are fighting against the power of darkness. We are fighting against the, 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 the power of Satan. In every moment of our life, I mean, with the power of the Holy Spirit, when we are fighting against and we are I mean, battling against uh, and making a war against the satanic attack and satanic powers, I mean, God is giving the victory for the people because we are given the weapons from God. Hallelujah. And in, in that particular verse, Ephesians chapter 6, we are reading that this full armor of God is, is of God, but it is given... For his people. Remember that word? No. It is the armor of God. 
No, read that verse. It is the armor of God, but it is given for the people of God who are redeemed. When we have the we have the weapons and we have the full armor of God with us, and we are fighting with that, and we are not fighting with the fleshly people. We are not fighting with your brother or sister, but we are fighting against the power of darkness, against the power of darkness. Hallelujah! And that is what we understand that in those verses, I mean, uh, uh, the, the 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 writer is just explaining or describing about, I mean, uh, what are the weapons of God that which is coming, I which is working for the people of God. Again, in the in the fourth point you will understand that from verses 11 to 16 we read that this is a song of uniqueness uniqueness of god then devathinte endana devam arana atulyan alle okay devam arana atulyan aanu okay uniqueness of god nammada devathinte uniqueness ne kurichana avada kaana sadikkunnathu verses 11 to 16 that means he says that no other god and goddesses are like him and he is greater than the egyptians kings and gods hallelujah there are many things which is written in verses 11 12 and 14 and 15 you read that who is like you among the gods o lord who is like you he is asking a question what is the question? Who is like you among all other gods and goddesses, O Lord? Who is like you? You are majestic in holiness, awesome in praises, working wonders for the people of God. Hallelujah. You believe? You believe this morning also? God is a God of wonders. Hallelujah. God is a God of miracles. Hallelujah. If God has do some has do something for the people of Israel, I mean he is ready and he is willing to do that same thing for the people of God, those who are sitting here also. Hallelujah. And when we believe that, when we accept that, you will understand the, the, the glory of that, the work of God. And he says that, you know, you stretch out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. In 14th verse, the peoples have heard the tremble. Ankush has gripped the inhabitants of Philistia. And lastly, 15th verse says that inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Huh? Edome Probukan Mar, Bramichu, Mawabi Mumber Kambam Bridichu, Kanyan and the Vasigal Lamindido, Urigi Poi, the enemies were melted away. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? How it was happening? You know, the enemies were melted away. That means, you know, when uh, uh, God was putting those, I uh, mean, uh, Egyptian people, Pharaoh and his uh, soldiers and everyone, I men with uh, all the horse and chariot and everything, when they were going under the water, we know that they are finished there. When there is, you know, they are not coming up after the, after crossing, after the people of Israel were crossing the Red Sea. So this is the work that God is giving, I mean, doing for the people of God. When, and this is the reason that we are pursuing God. We are singing unto the Lord. We are jumping. We are dancing. And uh, we are playing the instruments. And we are worshipping God. This is the example that when Moses and Miriam is giving for the people of God today in the New Testament. That you and me are supposed to worship God by singing songs. By singing songs with gladness, with glory. Giving glory to the Lord. Because God did the miracles and wonder working. I mean, hands of God was upon every person of this church. Amen. So let us uh, I mean, remember I mean, what is the uniqueness of God. That means he, our God is not like the other gods or goddesses of the enemies or Philistines or Egyptians or somebody but our God is greater than our God is the creator and our God is the redeemer hallelujah and he is the wonder working hands of God he is upon every person every moment in our lives hallelujah so let us also experience that every moment of our lives and also the fifth point the fifth point says that this was the song of God's faithfulness in His promises. Then, the even thing there, what the thing will can it say? The even thing that we just today are going to chant over a part of it. Then, the even what the thing could that that poor thing will be done. We just then are not over or to go to the even thing is thought from today. I know. Hallelujah. Where they were the winter kept our eye, what he wanted, in the matrum Allah, our every country by Europic and Amo, our Europic and Stalin, David and Ariama, I don't know, our Tenet to all. 
അവരുടെ കൂടെ ദൈവത്തിന്റെ സാന്നിധ്യം ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു men so you you will know that when god is giving a promise to you and god is able and he is willing and he is faithful in his word he is faithful in his promises he says that if i called you if i gave you a promise when i am going to fulfill that that's what we read in uh, uh, verse 17 read you will bring them and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance the place of lord which you have made for your dwelling the sanctuary o lord which your hands have established I mean today we are established in jesus christ we are standing on the rock of calvary how many of you believe that now we are established on jesus hallelujah i mean jesus is the rock I mean he move over the rock and jesus is permanent for every every time forever and he is standing there and we are trusting in the lord and we are saying that oh lord we are standing on the promises of god and we are established on jesus christ christ vaagna paaramel devu nammal endi irikka നിർത്തിയിരിക്കുകയാണ് ഹലലൂയ അത് ഓർത്ത എത്ര പേർക്ക് കർത്താവിന് സ്വാത്രം ചെയ്യാൻ സാധിക്കും ഹലലൂയ ഹലലൂയ കർത്താവ് ഒരിക്കലും ഒരു 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 വാക്തത്വം ചെയ്തിട്ട് മാറിപ്പോകുന്ന കർത്താവല്ല എവിടെ നിങ്ങളെ ഉറപ്പിക്കാമെന്ന് പറഞ്ഞോ അവിടെ കൊണ്ടുപോയി ഉറപ്പിക്കുന്നത് വരെ ദൈവത്തിന്റെ സാന്നിധ്യം നമ്മുടെ കൂടെയുണ്ട് ഹലലൂയ കർത്താവിന്റെ വാക്തത്വങ്ങൾക്ക് ഒരിക്കലും ഒരു മാറ്റം ഉണ്ടാകുന്നില്ല ഹലലൂയ ബിക്കോസ് അവർ ഗാഡ് ഈസ് എ ഗാഡ് ഓഫ് റെസ്റ്റോറേഷൻ ആൻഡ് അവർ ഗാഡ് ഈസ് എ ഗാഡ് ഓഫ് എസ്റ്റാബ്ലിഷ്മെന്റ് തിങ്ക് അബൌട്ട് നോവാസ് ആർക്ക് and Noah's family you know when god told them that you are supposed to face a difficult thing but you will be safe you will be safe in the ark of god then and noah and family they were safe in the ark of god and when the water was increasing you know they didn't know that where this ark was going to be established okay they didn't know that no they didn't know about the 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 what is that ararat mountain right they were not knowing anything about the ararat mountain and they were just starting from that place and they were not knowing what is going to happen but the lord knew that you are going to be on the ararat mountain because god was faithful to noah and family i mean and he placed them on the mountain of ararat i mean ararat parvathathinte mugalil ettunnathu vare ee i mean pettagathe kartav srushichu kondirunnu etrathalam venga vellam pongiyo i mean adonnu avare baadichilla i mean parappol nammal ee vellam kandu kondu pedikkunavara pakshe oru otta kaaryam orthanam ee vellam etra pongiyalum ave sotra we are safe inside the ark of god hallelujah i mean if you believe that i mean if you believe that you are safe inside the ark of god because when god is providing for the people of god god is protecting his people hallelujah avan ninne urappikkanda sthalathu chen urappikkanda kartavana sthotram ippol ee logathil namukku aavashyamulla nanmagal kartav tharunnunde oru divasam nammale kartav evade adipikkum asorgiya theerathu kondu poi adipikkunna oru divasam varunnunde kato hallelujah god is faithful but are you and me faithful in the presence of god that is a question hallelujah a god is faithful and they were just remembering how god has been delivering these people from egypt and what the lord has been doing for those people and how they reached up to this place crossing the red sea it was difficult for them it was difficult for them i mean while they were standing in front of the red sea red sea you know they were asking a question hey moses you are the leader what shall we do you know there are enemies are coming down any enemies are coming back and we can move from here ivudne namukku angotte ingu thiriyan pattatha avasam namukku petti kadakkuva endha cheyande so moses was praying to the lord and god said you just stretch out your stick no stretch out your i mean rod i mean in front of the red sea and it will be divided into two god did the miracle for them now they are remembering about how the lord was been delivering them and how the lord has been i mean doing the miracles for these people now they are just remembering or oh, thus far we reached and this is the this is the work of god that the faithfulness of god that god brought it into this place and we are praising god 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. And you and me are always thinking about that we are in Christ. And in Romans chapter 16, verses 25, Paul says that to God be the glory forever for his power to establish you according to my gospel and preaching of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Devam namale kartavil urapikyan shaktananda namakorachirika. Men, to God be the glory forever for his power to establish you according to the gospel and Jesus Christ. Amen. So we, we listened to the gospel of Christ and we came to Christ. Amen. So we became the believers and we are saying that we are the believers. Amen. We are the believers and saints of God and we are saying that. Amen. Now we say that you know we are established already. But again in future God is going to establish in heaven. Amen. So God is preparing heaven for, for the people of God. And he is preparing the, the, the places for the people of God. And he will establish every believer in heaven for his glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Again, when we go I mean, maybe uh, into, into the other portions of the Bible. I mean, that, that, that's over, you know. Uh, we were thinking about I mean, how I mean, the people of God were delivered from the from the uh, from the from the I mean uh, uh, Egypt and how they were uh, praising God and how they were I mean, singing to the Lord and using music and uh, uh, they were uh, singing to the Lord. I mean, at the same time, the second level I mean, is written in the, the other books, especially. You now we can see the animal sacrifice also as a worship of Israel. You know, one pattern was the singing songs and using the instruments and praising God and shouting God. Okay, at the same time, this next portion, next level of their worship was animal sacrifice. Okay, and that was a pattern for the worship of the people of Israel. That means animal sacrifice, it was a worship. And we know that the rules and instructions about the worship by sacrificing animals was officially given in the book of Exodus, which was related to the Passover. Okay, so when God was asking uh, the people that you have to do the Passover in order to be delivered from the, 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 the killing of the firstborn, okay, in Egypt, okay, during that time, God has given something that um, rules and regulations or instructions for the people of Israel that you have to do that. Then, in the book of Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, we see that elaborately God is giving how to do the sacrifice and how to do the I mean, bond offering or peace offering or a, tran a transgression offering or grain offering. I mean, taking all the offerings and saying that okay, these are the I mean, regulations and these are the instructions that how to do the offering, how to do the worship. But before that, God was saying them that you have to bring an animal and you have to offer or sacrifice that animal in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So animal sacrifice for the people of Israel. You will know that even though it was given in Exodus and Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. But in Genesis itself we can see that the people were sacrificing the animals. In Genesis itself they were sacrificing who all? Hmm? You know the Abel. Okay, Abel was sacrificing um, I mean, um, uh, uh, the, an animal. Noah, maybe after escape from the flood, he was I mean, doing the sacrifice. Abraham did and Isaac did and Jacob did. And we know that they were building the altars and sacrificing. Building the altar and sacrificing. And again, and again. You know, in the, in the time of Solomon, Solomon built the first uh, I mean, temple. And we know that. And sacrifices are there in temple and tabernacle and altar. The people of Israel bringing different animals in the presence of God. And they are offering in the presence of God. Man, so these kinds of sacrifices on the altar was there in the Old Testament. Man, but let me think about one thing. That what does the animal sacrifice of Old Testament represent in New Testament? No, it is very easy to say that all those people, the Old Testament people, the people of Israel, they were bringing the animals and they were offering in the presence of God and they were sacrificing in the presence of God. And what does it mean? And how it is representing the New Testament believers' worship? That's what we are going to look into maybe with few minutes. Okay, everything is written there. First of all, worship is a matter of sacrifice. Okay. When you read Genesis chapter 22 verse 2, you will know that how Abraham was I mean, trying to offer an offering or worship unto the Lord by obedience. That you will know that I mean, he was trying to sacrifice his own son. 
But God said, no, 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 no. Abraham, leave that. Leave that. I know that you have faith. And I know that you are obedient. I mean, I will arrange something else. Okay, the substitute was there. And he was offering that. You know, Abraham was doing that. So that means, you know, sacrificing something is important in the presence of God in worship. You know, what kind of sacrifice that God, I mean, was asking to Abraham to do that? What kind of offering? You know that? Yeah, what kind of offering? Burned offering. Okay, burned offering means? I mean, burning. Okay, the, and the, and the, okay, that means forsaking something which he was loving more and important. You know, Isaac was very important for um, um, Abraham. But God was asking, you have to, you have to obey my commandment and you have to offer your own son, only son, Isaac, you have to take him. You know, you know when, when we, when we uh, uh, worship God, you know, we cannot worship without losing something. You know, sometimes we, we think that, okay, I cannot lose anything, but I, cannot, I, can't, I want to worship. Okay? You have to spend something to worship God. When Abraham was spending something to worship God, he was ready to spend and he was ready to slaughter and he was ready to kill his own son Isaac. Hallelujah. How much we are spending in the presence of God in worship? How much time we are spending for worship? How much strength we are for, I mean, spending in I mean, worship? How much I mean, money we are spending for worshiping God? I mean, how much we are spending and what we are spending. Many a times we are thinking, oh, that is very important for me. My child is very important for me. Because of that, I cannot go for worship. Or, I mean, this thing or job or something. I mean, I, am, I have some, I mean, we have some preferences for something else. And we are saying that because of that, I have no time to worship God. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, let me tell you one thing. I mean, Adam, Idam, Okka, Namakondam, Vijayaritsa, Aradhan, Endiyarudha. I mean, how much you are giving importance for worshipping God? How much you are spending? Whatever you have. Abraham was ready to spend, I mean, whatever he had. And he was ready to forsake everything for God. Hallelujah. And we know that in Leviticus chapter 1, you will read that the animal to be totally consumed on the altar. This is sacrifice. Okay. So worship is not just like I mean, singing song or lifting hands or singing, okay, doing something and worshiping. No, it is not only that, but worship is a sacrifice. Worship is a sacrifice means totally that animal was to be consumed on the altar. Okay, this is what no, no, our life should be consumed. That means our all the attitude and all the I mean our intentions and uh, everything, what, what, whatever we feel or whatever think, when I mean, our thoughts or our deeds or something, you now our words, everything should be surrendered in the presence of God when we worship God. Okay, that is sacrifice. And secondly, secondly, worship is a process of handing over the ownership to God. Then what is worship? You know, in this time, in this time, people of God were worshipping God in this way. The thing is, the animal worship was, I mean, uh, there in the people of Israel. That is in Revelation, uh, sorry, Le Leviticus chapter uh, 1 verse 4. Can you read that verse? Le Le Leviticus chapter 1 verse 4. Yeah. <clears throat> He shall lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering that it may be accepted for him to make atonement on his behalf. Hmm? So that means when the, the, the worshipper is bringing an animal, bringing an animal, and he is supposed to lay his hands on the animal. He is supposed to lay his hand on the animal. That means hand towering the ownership to God. No, are, are we ready for that? When our ownership, you know, many times we are thinking, like, okay, I am the owner of myself and I am the owner of my family. Uh, I, I am the owner of whatever I have. But God is asking, are you ready to hand over that ownership in the hands of God? When, you know, uh, somebody was saying that you, you, and, you and me are the, uh, the, the jewels in the hands of God. 
okay jewels in the hands of god that means that much precious you and me in the presence of god kartavinte sannidhile kartavinte kayile i mean endana or nidhi aayittana deivam nammale ആക്കി വെച്ചിരിക്കുന്നത് കേട്ടോ അത്ര പ്രഷ്യസ് ആണ് നമ്മൾ അതുകൊണ്ട് നമ്മൾ ഒരിക്കലും ഐ മീൻ നമ്മൾ വെറും സിമ്പിൾ ആണെന്ന് വിചാരിക്കല്ലേ ദൈവത്തിന്റെ സന്നിധി നമ്മളെ പ്രഷ്യസ് ആയിട്ട് ആൾക്കാരാണ് കേട്ടോ അപ്പൊ നമ്മൾ ഓർത്തോണം ഐ മീൻ നമ്മളെ നമ്മളെ തന്നെ നമ്മുടെ ഓണർഷിപ്പ് എന്ത് ചെയ്യണം കർത്താവിന്റെ കയ്യിലോട്ട് കൊടുത്തിട്ട് ഐ മീൻ നമ്മുടെ ഓണർഷിപ്പ് ഉടമസ്ഥാവകാശം കൊടുത്തിട്ട് പറയണം കർത്താവ് ഞാൻ ഒന്നുമില്ല എനിക്കൊന്നും ചെയ്യാൻ അറിയില്ല എന്റെ ദൈവത്താൽ മാത്രമല്ല സാധ്യമാണ് supposed to lay his hands on the head of an animal and thirdly thirdly because of the lack of time will we'll, i mean move, i mean maybe very fastly third point is bond offering is a symbolic substitute that means there are possibilities and provisions of substitute who is the substitute then an innocent animal is supposed to be sacrificed on the altar you know that the animal is innocent but that when when the sinner is offering when the sinner is sacrificing that animal he must know that that innocent or uh, innocent animal is the substitute for that sinner hmm? and you and me have to think that jesus christ is a sub- substitute for our sins hallelujah and this is a symbolic substitution you know jesus i mean died on the cross of calvary for you and me instead of your sins instead of my sin hallelujah so this is what we understand it was the burnt offering is a symbolic i mean substitute and jesus christ the the, the innocent animal lamb when sacrificed himself i mean instead of a sinner as a ransom and the fourth point is I mean worshipper is to be grateful for the innocent animal the worshipper is supposed to be grateful to the to god for the innocent animal alle en nishkalangamai irikkuna aa mrugathe orthu ningal endu cheyanam devathine sotram cheyanam hallelujah aa mrugamaarana nammude karthavaguna kunnyaade namukku vendi kaalvari krushi yaagamaakkapetta norkumbol nammal endu cheyanam devathine nanni parayanam hallelujah avan nammude karthavaara irunnu paapam illathavan irunnu nishkalangana irunnu hallelujah aa sinless airikkuna yesu karthavu stotram aa kaalvari krushi namukku vendi yaagamaakkapetta pol nam endu cheyanam karthavine orthu devathine nanni parayanam we are to be grateful to god for jesus the innocent lamb who was crucified instead of our sin and in our iniquities hallelujah so let us all i mean come it also with the mighty hand of god we have been i mean thinking about many things from the bible about the old testament sacrifices and old testament i mean singing songs and using instruments and all those things hallelujah how much we are dedicating ourselves in the hands of god for worshiping god as this is the last i mean session let me ask you one thing hallelujah when god is looking for the people of god who are worshiping god and let us just think about I mean how we are worshiping god how we are worshiping god we'll be singing one malayalam song i mean in sangadangal sagalavum kazhinju poi ennoda paattu nammal paadan pogiyana i mean a paattu paadanal munbayitte nammal ethana samarpichondu prarthichatte hallelujah remember we are the redeemed people by the blood of jesus christ hallelujah we are the redeemed people i mean by the blood of jesus christ and we are here to worship the redeemer hallelujah I mean, let us sing the song i mean of victory and freedom hallelujah we have the song of victory and freedom we are singing that song and let us sing the song of uniqueness of god hallelujah a god almighty god is not just like the, the other gods and goddesses but our god is almighty god